It is my pleasure to bring DTM Kelly Moore to the virtual platform to address the three R's of membership building. Kelly has been a Toastmaster since May 2017. She's a member of several clubs. Orman Speechmaster, where she has served that club as president of the vice president of education, vice president of public relations, and vice president of, of membership. She currently serves as president of Toastmasters on the Halifax. She has served in the district as the past area director, club support chair, and social media chair. She has personally sponsored six members into Toastmasters and is mentoring three new members. She recently completed the leadership development path and is working on the effective coaching path. Please welcome to the virtual lector and Toastmaster, distinguished Toastmaster, Kelly Moore. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and Gail. Thank you for distinguished Toastmaster Gail Hill Smith and Division I Director for the introduction. Thank you for taking a little bit of time out of your Sunday and your time with your family and friends to be on this call tonight. I look forward to sharing some hopefully golden nuggets with you. And there's a double clutch right there. So whoever the grammarian is in the back of your mind, you can mark me for a double clutch. That is my favorite thing to do. Wanted to get right into our presentation as we share retaining, rejuvenating, and re-energizing. I got one of the R's wrong, but don't worry, we'll cover it in the presentation. So I'm going to pull up the presentation now and we will get right down to business. And I want this to be an interactive presentation. So I would like all of you to engage in the chat because we'll have a couple of questions and different information in the chat. So please stay engaged. I don't want this to be about me lecturing you for the next hour. I want you to all be involved. My contact information is on the slide. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me by phone call or email. And I will have that contact information at the end of the presentation. First, I wanted to start with a little bit of real talk. This has been a very challenging year for all of us, all of us on the call and not on the call. And I've come to find, unfortunately, some use this as an excuse to back off and not participate and not continue their involvement with Toastmasters, which is unfortunate. And we all go through cycles of life. We have all had trials and tribulations, especially in the last year. But I want to assure you that Toastmasters is one of the glue that holds us together. And I'm certain you can relate to feeling some form of isolation over the last year, whether your career has changed, not seeing your family and friends as regularly, to be safe. This is the time more than ever to keep involved. And I know we hear the phrase social distancing often. In a networking organization that I'm a part of, the founder of that organization has said, we should steer away from the social distancing, but the fit but instead focus on physical distancing. This does not change our, ask, our view of Toastmasters and what it's done to help us and all of the things that it's done to help everyone on this call today. So I wanted to go on that real talk for a minute because this is really important and something that I wanted to emphasize. We can, and we have, gone through some tough times, but together we will continue to thrive. So how in the world do you rejuvenate a club or yourself as a Toastmaster? Because like a job, I feel that we go through cycles like a roller coaster in Toastmasters. I'm certainly going through one at the moment. And I think that the most important, I know the most important thing is to keep that positive mindset. Because in your mind, if you think negatively, 
negative things are going to happen. And I don't say that as a means to be insensitive about what's happened over the last year. And it has nothing to do with that. I've noticed in my own business that when I have a negative attitude, I don't perform as well in my job. And when I have a positive attitude, I perform well. And as leaders, because we're all leaders on this call, leaders take time out of their schedule to improve themselves as Toastmasters and as club members and officers. We need to lead by example and display a positive and supportive attitude, which is part of the mission of Toastmasters. One of my favorite quotes is by Henry Ford, maker of Ford Automobiles. And he said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. So believe in your mind that you can and you will achieve. So how do we retain members? There's several ways to do that. I believe that's something that we put on the back burner is the in-reach within our clubs and the mentoring. Mentoring is something that I am personally very passionate about because I've been part of scenarios where I've had little to no mentoring. And I've been in situations where I've had mentoring from the beginning of joining an organization. And it has had a huge impact on my success in that organization and becoming a leader. And it's always a focus to recruit new members, to experience the opportunity that we have in Toastmasters, not just professional development, but from a personal development standpoint. If we're not taking care of the members that we have and we're not supporting them and helping them reach their goals, and we may not even know what those goals are. And I've been guilty of that, not knowing what the members' goals were. But we can always turn that around. But if we don't, reach within our core group and we're not meeting their needs and they're not achieving things, then how can we expect them to continue to renew their membership? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a right to expect that from them if they're not getting anything out of it. And as Toastmasters, we come from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life, and our goals are very different. And our goals change as we progress in our Toastmaster journey. But we need to be, we need to make our members the top priority and helping them achieve their goals, whatever they are. And when we obtain new members and new people join our club, we have to engage them immediately and get them involved help them through that process and navigating through pathways and helping them on their Toastmasters journey. They'll never forget. And those members will stay with you longer because they feel more of a connection. Does anyone have any questions thus far? If you do, feel free to put them in the chat. Myself and um, Gail Hill Smith will be monitoring the chat if there are any questions that come up during the presentation. And it will be interactive, become more interactive as the presentation moves forward. As I mentioned in the beginning, I don't want this to be me talking for the next 45 minutes. Another way to return member, retain members is to engage them. Some of you may or may not have heard of MOT or moments of truth. Moments of truth is a self-assessment of your club. And this is something that your club should ideally be doing twice a year. Some people, some clubs have a member of their club conduct that moments of truth. I personally like having someone conduct the moments of truth that is not a member of the club because this is something you want to be neutral. And I think we have a tendency as a club to pat ourselves on the back and we may overlook areas for improvement to make our members stronger. 
and help our members grow. Two of the clubs that I am a member of, we have Moments of Truth sessions coming up in the month of March. And both of those sessions are going to be conducted by members outside of the club. Now, of course, this is your decision as a club. And if you're a club officer contributing to that decision, feel free to do whatever you feel is best for the club. But having a devil's advocate or a neutral party, I believe that you get more out of that moment of truth and it helps the members in the club be more successful. Have you ever heard of the member interest survey? This is something that has been in Toastmasters and it's a very underutilized tool. Now this is just a snapshot, but you can Google member interest survey. You can go right to the district website, which is www.toastmastersd, as in division, 84.org. And Gail, if you wouldn't mind putting that website in the chat so the, our fellow Toastmasters have access to that. I also have the blank document saved as well. So if any of you would like to have this document, please put your email in the chat and I would be happy to send it directly to you. I am sending this document to the, the newest members that I'm currently mentoring. So we know immediately what their goals are, what they want to accomplish and objectives they want to accomplish. And then we get a feel and an understanding of where they are and where they see themselves. Some may have an interest in leadership. Some may have an interest in improving their listening skills, critical thinking skills, evaluation skills. This helps you pinpoint what the Toastmasters goals are. And when you know what they are, you can work to help them achieve those goals. And I'm certain we're doing this in all of our clubs, but if you're not, it's a great time to start. When you have members that earn accolades in complete levels and projects and pathways, you should absolutely be taking the time during the meeting to recognize those members. Positive support. Again, back to that Toastmasters mission statement. Positive and supportive attitude and supporting our members. So important. It's difficult to express in the Zoom box how important it is to engage our members, our active members. Now we're gonna do a little exercise. I would like you all to put in the chat how you were invited to your first meeting. And Gail, if you wouldn't mind turning your camera on and unmuting yourself, I would love for you to share the story of how you were invited to Toastmasters while the rest of us are sharing in the chat. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Kelly. Actually, I'm a two-timer invitee. The first time, I had heard about Toastmasters was early in my professional world of marketing and advertising. I was production uh, artist with then Ivy's. If any of you had old enough to know Ivy's retail retailer here, and one morning our copywriter, whom I greatly admired and respected, came in one morning shaking, nervous. And it was so unlike Joanne to be this, this nervous. So I asked her, Joanne, what is going on? Anything I can do? She says, no, I've, I've got to give a speech in Toastmasters later. <laughs> and and so I've never heard of Toastmasters. So I had asked her all about it. And as it turned out, it was just the perfect thing that I didn't know I was looking for. So I went home and I told my uh, then husband about it. And both of us ended up joining a club that's unfortunately no longer around down here in Winter Park. But we both had different reasons for joining Toastmasters. So four years plus later, I was an assistant area director, but then I had to somewhat resigned from Toastmasters. So 21 years later, 
now I am single and I am uh, pursuing a different facet of my, my life. And that was as uh, in human resources. Well, as it turned out, I was a member of the American Association of Training and Developers because I was a corporate trainer under the guise of human resources. And our chapter was looking to form a Toastmaster club because there were two other Toastmasters in it. So one night after a meeting, and obviously in person, and Tim Chastain and I, we walked out of the chapter meeting and he looked at me and he says, Gail, have you ever heard of Toastmasters? And I said, well, actually, yes, I used to be a member 20 some years ago. And he says, well, we are chartering a new club and we are looking for members and I would love to invite you. And I said, sure. Well, I've been a member since with Central Florida facilitators and helped charter in 2003. And yes, I've gone from brownette to gray during all that time, but <laughs> it's, been, it's been a wonderful journey. Thank you, Kelly. Gail, thank you so much for sharing. And Andrea, thank you for putting that, putting how you were invited in the chat. And Andrea is in um, Mormon Speech Masters, which is one of the clubs that I am currently a member of. So, and I'd love to hear from the rest of you. And would anyone like to share and unmute themselves um, about how they were invited to Toastmasters? Hi, Hi, I can. My name is Tina Smith, Division B Toastmaster, uh, Division B Director Toastmaster. I was invited by a very young, dynamic young lady who I admired a lot. Her ability to stand in front of an audience and command it. And that's like, wow, I would love to learn how to do that. So she invited me to her Girl Talk Toastmaster Club here in Division B. And I was just in awe of the speakers, the whole dynamic of the meeting. It was fun, it was exciting. Everyone was getting along and there was even a male there in the audience as well, even though it was all girl talk. So I joined right then and there and eight years later, I'm still a Toastmaster. Tina, that's great. Thank you for sharing. And there's such a variety of clubs, I didn't know there was a, a girl talk club. That's a very unique concept. So that's very interesting. And um, I, before I forget uh, fellow Toastmasters, if you could please put your name in the chat also and what club or clubs that you're currently a member of so we can stay connected. Uh, Dennis, immediate uh, past division I director, would you care to share your Toastmaster story? Well, when it comes to did I unmute myself? Okay, can you hear me? Okay, I'm not getting my light up, so I didn't know. <clears throat> um, when it comes to joining Toastmasters, my story is a little different than most. I, back when I was in high school, I had a friend of mine whose father was a Toastmaster, and I enjoyed public speaking at that time, and he knew I did, so he invited me. And I went to this Toastmaster club in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And after experiencing it, I swore I'd never go to another Toastmasters club. It was far too formal and stiff for me. But in 2006, uh, I had decided that I needed to change careers and I decided I would try and do public speaking for a career. But it had been a while since I had done any. So I decided to go find Toastmasters Club because I figured it'd be a good place to hone my skills. I'm one of those oddballs that speaking in public has never bothered me. So it took me a little while to find it. And I tell this story one thing as a cautionary tale for Toastmaster Clubs, it's really important that you have the correct information both on your website and at Find a Club at Toastmasters International so that people can find you easily because it took me like three weeks. So I um, finally found the club. They were meeting in, a, in a, a rehabilitation center in what I like to call was a closet with a gland problem. It was a very small room. And uh, it was at West Volusia Toastmasters, which I'm still a member of. 
And we, uh, we went from having almost no, in fact, when I joined, I made the club legal because I was the sixth member. At that time, you had to have six members. We grew the club. We went on for years and years at 20 to 30 club, 20 to 30 members. And here recently, we've had a dearth, and it has a lot to do with going virtual. We lost a lot of our members, unbelievably so. And we've had a real problem with gaining members since then. So that's kind of my experience. Um, most of my uh, fondest memories have been in leadership, uh, which has been in every club officer position and then in the district and then being on the international board. Dennis, distinguished Toastmaster Dennis Wooldridge, thank you so much for sharing that story. And it's a very unique one. And thank you for those of you so far that have put how you were invited in the chat. And I'd love to hear from all of you. But there seems to be a common theme for those of you that have shared. You went to your first meeting and you had a great experience and you loved it and you either joined that night or shortly thereafter. So as you're inviting you know, friends, colleagues, family to your next Toastmasters meeting, just think of that love that you felt when you were first invited and you had your first experience. And I fell in love with the first club that I visited and I'm still a member almost four years later. And I was simply asked by someone I knew in a networking group if I was looking to brush up on my speaking skills. And in my head, I thought, well, duh, of course I am. I'm a salesperson. You know, I'm here promoting my business. I, you know. Outside sales, I want to be a better speaker, a better presenter that helps me with my sales. So he invited me to what was my first Toastmasters meeting. And I was just so impressed with the professionalism. And there was that right balance of fun and getting things done and structure and organization. And I signed up for the club that night. And I'm still a member four years later. And now I'm a member of a couple of other clubs, which I love equally as well. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. And again, if you haven't put your information, please do. I would appreciate that because we want to know, we want to jog your brains with how you were invited. It's not as complicated as you think. I think we just have a tendency to convince ourselves that we have to sell someone Toastmasters or coming to a meeting. It's just inviting them to check out the experience. And if I'm sure most of you can relate to the fact that when you were invited, someone didn't force you to join, you saw value in it. And something else to think about now that you've been a Toastmaster, why do you keep coming back? There's a reason for that. And think of that as you're sharing with others why you continue to go to Toastmasters meetings. I'm going to build, pull my presentation back up. So now we're going to get to the fun part. How do we promote and invite people to come to the clubs? The tough part, but I promise you it's not as hard as you think. So we're going to do one other exercise. And I want everyone to put an idea in the chat of how to promote their club or even better. Let's unmute ourselves. And I would like everyone to share an idea and I'm gonna jot them down. Let's see. Let's, I'll call on you by name so we limit the background noise. <laughs> Andrea Oliver, could you share one idea of a way to promote or invite someone to visit your club? Well, I'm going to, which I, I have two people I work with that have mentioned they had interest. So I'm going to ask them again, probably tomorrow, because we are having an open house for ours. Um, not this Monday, the following Monday. So I'm probably going to reach out to them again, just to see if they're interested and let them know about the open house. Great idea, Andrea. Thank you for participating. Irma Tate, who is a fellow club member as well. Irma, let's hear an idea from you. Well, 
good evening, everyone. First off, um, I would say that supporting each other and coming together as one mind to generate ideas to encourage membership stability as well as introduce others, neighbors, friends, family members even, to be a part of our Toastmasters meeting at least once during the month, like a promotional type event. That Irma, that's, that's a fantastic idea, Irma. Thank you for sharing that. Almost like a brainstorming or like monthly promotional session. That's great. Love it. Let's see. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Nilafar, is that correct? Yes, it is. You can call okay. me Nilu or Nilu. That was perfect. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. So as I shared in my chat box, I myself was quote unquote recruited through an employee communication event. So essentially they attracted me by offering either skill I wanted or something I enjoyed and use that to couch a demo meeting within it. So I'm thinking replicating that in the demographics that my particular club serves. Now Seminole State College Toastmasters Club was originally designed for professor, staff and administration. And that was the bulk of our membership for some time. But now we also include students and outside members. So this first one, I know it might sound ridiculous, but uh, <laughs> the students right now at Seminole State with the change of in-person to virtual classroom, they lost a little bit of that social element of, of games and on-campus events. So pardon me, the first idea that popped in my mind, which wasn't my best one, but the first idea that was popped into my mind was something like a virtual game night, trivia night, just something where uh, catered to the students, like here's an opportunity to connect with people hosted by blah, blah, blah. So they know it's not like their teachers or administrators, it's someone outside for the students, an activity that they might like to do, and then also throw in Toastmaster based games like, you know, table topics, turn them into games, or another aspect of the club, turn it into like a game or activity. And that way, sort of, <laughs> not indoctrinate them, but give them like a little taste of what this is, and then invite them then, you know, in the in the close, you sort of invite like, oh, if you thought that was awesome, we actually have a club that meets online that does this every single week. And yes, my, my, uh, my family is meeting elsewhere. So there's some uh, stuff in the background. And then that's I okay. So that was my student idea and then easily do something for it to reach staff and administration again, which we've lost in the last couple of years, which would be maybe uh, offering to do a session or like a overcoming virtual uh, communication barriers, like how to properly execute a Zoom meeting or how to put your best foot forward on some of these virtual platforms. And it essentially be uh, uh, a demo meeting that gives them some information that they can use and then has the close of you can learn this and more at the Seminole State College Club. Join us Monday at 7.30, blah, 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 blah. Those are two fantastic ideas, Milo, and I'm jotting these down so that way I, I can share them with you if you, well, hopefully you're all writing them down too. Thank you so much for sharing that. And so, Janya, did I pronounce that correctly? You did. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic, fantastic ideas, everyone, so far. We were, we were in, in fact, brainstorming the same set of ideas in our club as well. Two other ideas that we were thinking of is having a heavy social media presence and not just posting something, but tagging your current members. That way, their friends, when they look at your page, they're going to look at something about this Toastmasters as well. Um, not, not just uh, simply posting uh, a, a welcome note or something like that, but actually posting photos of you guys having fun in the Zoom will gather the attention. For example, our theme for next upcoming meeting is St. Patrick's Day. So we're all are gonna wear something green and take a screenshot of everybody's faces and then post it on social media and tag uh, the the team member that way it appears on all of that team members friends page 
uh, again, everybody's on their phone constantly. That is bound to uh, raise some uh, uh, topics to discuss. And then when they bring it up to you, you just tell them how, how wonderful the program is and that's bound to bring them at least as, an, as a guest and then eventually as a member. Wonderful ideas. I love the meeting theme where you're going to do a screenshot of everyone doing a fun pose or outfit or something. Great ideas, thank you. Uh, Tina Smith, how about you? Well, so far, everybody stole my ideas and already mentioned them. And they had great ideas. <laughs> well, but I guess I, that's a good thing, but. <laughs> yes, it is absolutely a good thing. That means great minds think alike. Isn't that uh, the truth? Yes, I was thinking how you can emphasize the value that you receive for $45 every six months. You can't beat that anywhere, any seminar, anywhere short of being free. So I'd like to let people know the value, find out where they are in their professional life or even their personal life. What situations uh, do they find themselves in where communication is vital, even something as small as talking to a two-year-old and ways that they can improve their communication skills where they can get the desired result out of whomever they're talking to. So I like to emphasize the value that Toastmasters brings as one of the ideas. I love that idea. That is a fantastic idea. It's so true. I mean, you can't get a better bang for your buck for not even $100 a year, right? With all the personal and professional development and all the skills that you develop in leadership, it's this isn't just a talking public speaking club. We're so much more advanced in what we learn. So wonderful feedback. Uh, how about you, Gail? I am sorry, whoops. I am, am sorry, I was getting involved down here in the, the chat room to um, actually type in ways of promoting the, the club. You, you see that Division I has a Facebook page and I had been given administrative access to it shortly after I was um, in this position. And I had to be, I have to be honest with you, I, it's been a, a learning curve. I'm still, I consider myself a newbie, but I have been posting uh, information and posting about clubs and their successes. And in this case, Andrea, I had mentioned that if you have a promotional flyer for your upcoming open house, send it to me and I'll be glad to get it up on the division website. But you can also do that your, yourself, you know, by posting. But of course you have to like the Facebook page. In addition, uh, another way of promoting the club, I know everybody has heard of and is familiar with Meetup, but what I don't know is, is everybody know, does everybody know that District 84 has a line budgeted item to allow any club that wishes to have a free meetup account, they simply have to coordinate with our meetup chairman, Rebecca McGilton, and I am glad to connect you too. But meetup has been surging in use and has been surging in popularity and is a great way to promote the club. Those, those are the social media that I'm most familiar with. And then just good old one-on-one -on -one email and telephone calls to friends and, and colleagues. So word of mouth, it's one of the best but oldest and still contemporary virtual way of promoting <laughs> promoting anything. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, Gail, for that great feedback. And 
their uh, meetup is a great way to get people involved for sure. And if you're posting on Facebook, you may consider downloading an app on your phone called Hoot Suite, which is spelled H O O T S U I T E. Because if you're posting on Facebook, that app allows you to share the same post on other platforms like Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, well, Twitter, I don't know if you do pictures. Not as social media savvy as I once was. I've never had a Twitter account. So that's something that if there's someone that you know that's tech savvy and social media savvy, and there's members, fellow Toastmasters within our district that can help with that as well. And Dennis, I'd like to call upon you as well, if, if you could, if you would so kindly share an idea as well. Well, one of the things that we've been doing lately, and, and as I said, we're having a bit of a membership issue, so we're, we're really desperately trying everything, has been Facebook. And what we found is that uh, we'll post something we make sure that all of the club members like it. If you make a comment on that post uh, that is three words or more, it will get more traction. And then we will share it on our personal pages. Uh, what we have found out is that some of the graphics are more appealing than others. Uh, I did a graphic for an open house we were having that used all kinds of emoticons, the smiley face kind of people. And, and we had well over a thousand uh, viewings of that. Our problem is it's not generating any membership for us. We're getting a lot of likes and a lot of folks are seeing it, but it's not generating membership. But the idea of the, uh, one of the things that we've also done in the last couple of months, and we haven't seen a return on it, but we expect to, is we're actually boosting. Uh, our club has a decent treasury and we're not spending anything now because we're meeting completely virtually. So we're taking that money and putting it into marketing in the way of boosting our Facebook pages. And it's, it, it's been obvious in the statistics that we're doing much better. It's just not generating you know, the kind of interest we'd like to see, but um, you never know, it may break next week and we have more people than we can deal with. Um, the other thing that we have been doing is uh, reaching out to prior members. Uh, we've had an open house that is a reunion uh, where we've had, we've invited uh, everybody we could find that used to be a member. And it, it really works um, well to get people there. Again, it hasn't been terribly successful in us getting them to rejoin, but at least the exposure is out there. We know these kind of things. If they don't, haven't worked for our club, there's no reason that they're not going to work for other clubs. Dennis, those are wonderful ideas. And I love the idea of reunion as opposed, an open house is a great idea, but putting a different spin on it as a reunion and making sure the Facebook is active. And Dennis made a great point that if you post something, make sure the members like it, share it on your personal page. And if you comment three words or more, that boosts the post and has it go up on the news feed and the more people comment the more it keeps going to the top and the more people will see it so that takes time for that but that will th those are great ideas and everybody had wonderful ideas that's what i love about being a toastmaster is there's so much diversity and there's so much collaboration and all of these ideas we can take these back to our clubs and share these ideas I'm going to share a few in our last part of this session, and many, several of these have already been discussed, but I wanted to add a couple of points to those. There is a handout that we will be sending out top 12 ways to promote your club, and good for you all, you passed the test, just kidding, there wasn't a test, but a lot of these ideas were already shared, so these are things that you're already thinking which is fantastic. Well, number one, nothing beats a personal invitation ever. And the reason why we did that exercise just a few minutes ago on who invited you to Toastmasters and why you keep coming back, that's something important to remember when you're sharing. 
We've been distancing ourselves from a physical perspective. This is the perfect opportunity to call and pick up the phone and talk to somebody. It can be a family member. It can be a customer. It can be a friend. Don't prejudge who needs some social connection. And our jobs for many of us have changed for those of us that are working. Our jobs have changed in the skills that we need to have to continue to do what we do. This is a great way to get someone involved. Next, and Dennis, thank you and for bringing up this point earlier in the meeting. It is an absolute necessity to have your website updated with your current meeting information. If you are meeting virtually, please indicate that you're meeting virtually. Put your meeting link. If you don't want to post the password, we, you certainly don't have to, but make a note on the website of who to contact to get the password if you're concerned about Zoom hackers. And make sure to have an updated email address because people send requests or online submissions to indicate their interest in Toastmasters, and that is a hot off the presses lead. So your vice president of membership or whoever's email is set up is getting that correspondence and they should absolutely be following up. Yes, Dennis, did you wanna make a point on that? Yeah, just in reference to your uh, making sure your information is current and that you have uh, the right email address. Uh, there's also a place where you can put a phone number. Make sure that the phone number of that person is actually somebody who's willing to take calls about prospective members. Uh, there was a, a time back, uh, Gail will remember this, I don't know if anybody else does or not, but Scott Hohen, when he was the uh, Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, which is now the Club Growth Director, <clears throat> he went on to several of the websites for clubs in the district and called them as if he was a prospective member. And most all of the calls that he made, they would be like, uh, so yeah, I'm calling about Toastmasters. Yeah, what do you want? You know, they had no etiquette, or they had no idea why he was calling because they weren't the per they weren't the contact person. So make sure phone numbers are correct as well. That is a great point, Dennis. Thank you. And Gail, did you want to add to that too? Yes, definitely. I can relate to that, Dennis. As recent as just last year, right after we had to go virtual, I went to club websites as posted and linked from our district web, web page. And I contacted, I'm going to guess, I didn't, didn't uh, log it, track it, but I probably contacted mm, close to 30, 40 clubs via their website. Two months later, I had a response from one club and I had a telephone call from a second club. In the interim, when I wasn't receiving a contact, I then went, as to your point, Dennis, the telephone came up against numbers no longer in service. I came across one former member whose member whose number was still on the website so yes it is imperative that those websites be updated constantly <laughs> good point both excellent points thank you following up is important which we'll talk about a little later and to go back on the personal invitation for just a moment don't forget to ask when someone visits to join. And you don't have to put pressure, just simply ask, would you like to join? But I'm going to share a story on the opposite end of that. It was approximately a year and a half ago where someone came to visit one of my clubs that I'm a member of in person. And at that point, we had a membership drive where we were trying to recruit five members as right now we have Talk Up Toastmasters, which if your club gains five new members, whether it's dual memberships where someone is a member of another club or a past member rejoins or someone brand new joins, 
you get $25 from Toastmasters and a ribbon for your club banner. You want to make sure that you present it in a way that it doesn't intimidate the guest and make them feel like I have, they have to join because I made that mistake. And this was a year and a half ago when I was president of another club and it scared the guest and the guest never joined and they never came back to visit. So I say that as a cautionary, don't be afraid to ask people to join the club, but we don't wanna scare them away either. Next point, social media. This has brought, been brought up several times during our conversation. Does your club have a Facebook page? Well, now's a good time, a great time to get one. You should have a couple of the Met officers be administrative, have administrative access. So that way they can post and it's not just one person and it's not solely left in the hands of one person. And please update your information where you're meeting. If you want to use the app Hootsuite, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, as a way to post on several different platforms and we'll cut the work of having to ind individually post on all those platforms. And please keep all of the posting and the feedback positive, nothing negative. Does you, do you have weekly winners? Do you vote for best table topics or best speaker or best evaluator? I've been, I'm in a club that votes on all three. I'm in a club that votes on best table topics. I've seen no voting, but always promote. Do you have members that have been recognized recently? Have members won awards? Speech contests. Post about your speech contest winners with their permission as well. Create a Facebook event for your open houses. Post the flyer. Post it at work if you can. But for a corporate club, make sure you're following those guidelines. This is just a little tidbit that I found to be helpful. I have on my email signature, because my Gmail address is my business and personal address, I have a link to Toastmasters on my email signature. And that's prompted a couple of requests. So for those of you that are working for, that are working, if you have permission to do so, or on your personal email, I would recommend this very subtle tip of having the Toastmasters website on your email signature. Community boards. This can go one way or the other because a lot of businesses are still open. Unfortunately, some have closed. Some of us are going out in public and some of us aren't. So for those of us that are, please be respectful. If you are going out in public and you're going to a library or a community center or your favorite local diner, ask if you can put a flyer up about Toastmasters. Do you know friends that own businesses in the community? This is a great way to help promote and you just never know who's going to be looking at it that day. What about your local Publix or your doctor's office? If you're allowed to go inside, if you have an appointment, a lot of doctor's offices are only allowing one patient at a time, but ask if you can hang up a flyer up to promote Toastmasters. You never know who's going to see it. And let me take a look in the chat quickly here. I just want to make sure. I saw something about a Facebook Live event. So Nilo, that's a great idea. And thank you for all the feedback. Thank you. We're all part of other networking organizations. I'm not saying that I'm necessarily a member of all these, but we have a partnership with Rotary International, our division I director, distinguished Toastmaster Gail Hill Smith. She's worked with one of the area directors to form a partnership with a local human resources organization as a means to encourage companies to possibly have scholarships or sponsor members or to encourage new employees to join as well. Gail, did you wanna share about that briefly? 
I saw you unmute yourself. Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd be glad to. Yes, as I had mentioned at the, the beginning, and uh, those that joined us on the later side uh, would not have heard this, but Division I and your Division I team has been uh, working arduously to help all our clubs in the division with membership, retention, recruiting, and building. And our and, and I will share this with you all that we have not focused on establishing new clubs. That is a lot of time and a lot of energy because your team wanted to focus on you and your clubs. And hence, we have been providing numerous workshops to help you learn about social media, learn about those benefits and those aspects that district and TI have made available. And as an example, uh, tonight, Kelly, uh, in Kelly's workshop here. Um, but to, to that, yes, and part of the initiative and the strategic plan involved so being supported by the SHRM chapter of Flagler of Lucia, as well as the Career Source. And why did we partner with them? One, we have actually members in both of those groups who actually uh, suggested the idea of let us help you. And we ran with it. So much so that we then worked with TI in their branding and their legal departments to design and have uh, um, approved uh, a, a flyer for use by our Division I clubs during and for building, recruiting, and rejuvenating our clubs. The benefit of having these supporting agencies, organizations, is that they have now been promoting Toastmasters at their monthly meetings of HR professionals. And the HR professionals in turn have used the tenets of their uh, communication to their employees, their staff. Career Source is a basically a, a public service, if you will, for workplace uh, positioning. And they had a database of some 12,000 uh, members. So they have been promoting Toastmasters on behalf of Division I. And then in addition, I'll just mention this uh, because I was gonna wait to the end, but we have, it's 757. Uh, one of our Toastmasters who I had con contacted because of their signature on their email, I inquired, what, what do you do? and a discussion pursued. And he provided uh, me for use here in the division for all of Seminole County and Flagler County and Volusia counties, a listing of potential leads, member leads, prospect leads. And with that said, I would like to have you all take advantage of putting in chat, or you can, of course, email me. I would love to send out a listing, and in some cases, hundreds of listings of businesses in all the different zip codes of Seminole, Volusia, and Flagler counties. So if your club has a specific email, excuse me, a specific zip code, which you would like information of these businesses to then contact, let me know. I, I, I have this information and I, I've just been sitting on edge trying to get it out to our clubs. So take advantage. You are the first responders. Let me know. Kelly, I hope that that helps. Thank you very much, Gail. It does. And I, I think we should all take advantage of that offer because that's just a way to help grow our clubs and it's already being facilitated with us not having to put in a lot of effort. Now, in the respect of time, I am going to go through the last few slides here 
quickly because Toastmasters finishing on time is very important. And the other part of the being involved in other networking organizations is subtly letting people know that you're part of Toastmasters. So I'm part of a networking organization. And when we meet with members, we pass out a sheet so the members can get to know us personally. And the reason I'm sharing a snapshot of this is because under accomplishments and interests, or I'm sorry, accomplishments and networks, I have listed several parts of Toastmasters that I served as an area director that I achieved distinguished Toastmaster. It's important for people to know outside of the Toastmasters world, other things that you're doing. Talk about Toastmasters at work. That's really important. Make sure to listen in your daily conversations. You hear someone say, I lost my job. I got a promotion. I'm starting a new job. I'm looking for work. What better place to develop interview skills and practice interview questions? If you have a coworker that has an upcoming presentation, you can schedule them to practice their presentation towards the end of your Toastmasters meeting. I've helped a couple of members get involved in Toastmasters that way. You can do a press release, which is right on the district website, which Dennis and Gail were kind enough to share. And it's easy, you just copy and paste your information and it's already put together for you. Once community events start happening, you can set up a vendor table. And our club growth director, Paula Stuma, had a table set up at an, a big event a couple months ago and it generated some interest. Dennis spoke about following up with past members and visitors. That is a great tool and a great key. And everyone goes through different walks of life and some members have stepped back. Gail came back after a 21 year hiatus. Didn't think she was old enough to have a 21 year hiatus. But just that reminder and that phone call could be as simple as that to have someone come back and reach out to local businesses. And Gail shared uh, about this a little bit earlier with local organizations that Division I is currently working with. And your homework, I want you to write down five people that you feel would benefit from attending a Toastmasters meeting and make the commitment to invite them to your next meeting. And on top of that, I would encourage your fellow club members to do the same and don't pigeonhole anyone or assume people are or are not interested. Well, this concludes our session for today. It is being recorded, so feel free to share with any fellow members. If you'd like to put feedback in the chat, if you want to send me any comments or feedback or any methods to improve the presentation, or if there are any ideas that you came up with that were not discussed, we will find a way to save the chat and send it out to you. And unless anyone has exiting comments, I wanna thank everyone for taking the time on a Sunday night to make that commitment to improving your clubs and growing your membership. Thank you so much.